So firstly, thank you for joining the session. This is to, for NHS Supply Chain to talk about how we're going to deliver a resilient national procurement and supply chain model in these very challenging times. I'm going to now hand over to Heather Tierney Moore just to introduce the session. So thanks Chris. So just to introduce myself, I'm Heather Tierney Moore, I'm Chief, uh, Chair of NHS Supply Chain. But I've had my whole career working in the NHS, initially as a clinician, then as a manager and ultimately a Chief Exec. So I really understand the importance of the resilience issues and the direct impacts that can have on the quality and safety of care. So one of the things I'm very committed to is holding that kind of tension, if you like, between our need to be efficient, our need to be resilient, and to really understand the needs of our customers, who are ultimately the clinicians who are predominantly the people using the things that we provide. Um, Within that, of course, we're working very closely with NHS England, who are now, we are part of NHS England, although still a separate limited company. Um, and I'd be delighted to talk to anybody privately after this session, if you'd find that, that helpful. In terms of, um, of what we've been doing over the last 12 months, I've been interim chair for 12 months. We had a new chief exec started about the same time last year. And we've been really thinking about what our strategy should be over the next few years. Everything is changing around us. We need to change to keep up with that. But equally, we recognise that we're not necessarily the easiest organisation to work with. We've got our own improvement journey to make. But we do have some very ambitious aims. So we want to try to really create one NHS supply chain across the whole of the NHS. That's not to say we have to do everything, but that we are actually working together in a true partnership way. We want to be confident that the products that are critically important, are we can, you can totally rely on us. So we've established an aim of 100% availability of what we together agree will be critical products so that you don't have to worry about that. And we believe we have a value proposition that by 2030 we can deliver a billion pounds worth of value back to the NHS year on year. So our ambitions are huge. But right now we're all dealing with real challenges and Chris is going to talk to you a bit more about what we're doing to address those right now. So I'll hand over back now to Chris. Thank you Heather. So um, I'm Chris Holmes, I'm the Director of Supply Chain for NHS Supply Chain and what I'm going to try and do over the next 15 minutes is just take you through some of the activities that NHS Supply Chain are doing uh, to help you get confidence in our service, to explain to you what we're doing from a resilience perspective, and other areas that we're also working on from a value, sustainability and value-based approach, so you can get a rounded picture of the activity within NHS Supply Chain. So firstly, just a little bit about us, uh, for those of you who may be less familiar. So NHS Supply Chain is the largest supplier of consumable medical equipment and capital products into the NHS. We exist only to support the NHS. That's our only mission in life. Uh, and there's a big team working every single day to ensure that we can deliver the best possible service for the NHS. And our mission is to make it easier for the NHS to put patients first. Just a few numbers around the service. So as you can see, I'm not gonna go through all the numbers on the screen, but it's a, it's a large organization. Our sales are over three billion uh, from an annual perspective and growing year on year. Um, we deliver to every single NHS trust in England, some in Scotland, some in Wales, and also we serve part, parts of Northern Ireland. So we are a significant partner to the NHS and work hand in glove. We're trying to ensure that the NHS has got all the products it requires when it requires them to ensure it can deliver that first-class patient care. Um, it's a very challenging environment. We understand that. And what we're working to do is to ensure that we can provide our services uh, at the highest service level possible every single time that we, you place an order on us. 
There's a little bit here about our vision and our strategy. Uh, again, you may have seen this, Heather spoke earlier about uh, our one NHS. Our vision is to ensure that the NHS understands that they can rely upon NHS supply chain to deliver. As I say, we're here to serve the NHS and it's our intention to make sure that we provide the best possible service, even during these incredibly, incredibly challenging times. So on to a little bit of some of the activity that's happening and how we're going to go about delivering a resilient supply chain service. Well, let's start with some of the challenges. It's not lost on anybody, I'm sure, within this room and within the wider auditorium of the challenges that exist within the supply chain right now. Those challenges are global challenges. Many of them have come as a result of COVID, but as COVID is subsiding, it's the after effects of what COVID has done to that, also that global supply chain that we're dealing with. There are also challenges created by uh, our exit from the EU, which have largely been, I would say, masked by, by COVID, but they also exist. And are clearly they are geopolitical challenges that nobody would have predicted at the start of this calendar year, which also place great strain on the, on the uh, supply chains into the NHS. We understand those challenges. We wrestle with them with you and on your behalf every single day. And our aim is to try and ensure that we can work as hard as possible to make those challenges and work through those challenges as quickly and as painlessly as we can. So the challenges also exist closer to home in terms of inflationary challenges. Some of those global elements that I spoke about that place pressure on us as, a, as, a, as, a, as an island nation. And we are really experiencing significant challenges in supply from our supply partners, both at home and our global supply partners as well. To the point whereby global supply partners are taking decisions on where they place their products. So challenges with raw materials, challenges with rising, rising prices, is leading organisations to make decisions on where they see their most profitable markets for them. And we are having to manage that to support the NHS deliver the patient service that it needs to do. But we are, we are committed to doing that and we are continuing to compete in that global market with other organisations, but also with other uh, countries as well. I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're doing. I'm not going to go through all of those um, activities on the slides. Some of them you'll see are quite tactical. Some of them are slightly more strategic. But I'm just going to point out a few things that we are doing. To ensure that we can maintain supply, one of the things that we are doing is increasing our stock holding levels. So that is really quite tactical, but it's really very, very important. To ensuring that we've got increased levels of, st increased levels of stock which can help us then ride out some of those unforeseen challenges that come along within the supply chain and ride out some of those bumps. That's a commitment that NHS supply chain has made and it's a commitment that we will continue with over the coming months. And at the moment, you mean we'll, we, we will continue to deliver that for as long as we see that being a suitable tactical strategy. We're also uh, working to ensure that we have got greater transparency across our end-to-end -end supply chain. One of the things that COVID taught all of us was that we didn't understand our supply chains as well as we thought that we did. And I include our supply partners in that. I have conversations on a near daily basis with many supply partners, many of them global, and the challenges that they face in their supply chain in actually having the transparency and therefore being able to predict what's going to happen is a, is a real issue for them at the moment. So one of the things that we need to do to help and start being more proactive than reactive is understanding how those supply chains work more, understanding where raw materials come from, and then being able to feed that back into our category strategy development to ensure that we're looking at how uh, and what changes need to be made for the future to improve upon where we're at now. It's a really challenging environment, and at the moment, that the supply issues are at unprecedented levels. I've been with the NHS for over, just over 25 years now, and this is the most challenging period I've ever known. The way some of the things that we're doing, and Simon's going to come and talk uh, in a little while about what it feels like for a customer to collaborate with NHS supply chain, but we're looking to bring transparency to what we're doing and the challenges that we have. So what I've put up on the screen here is just an example of dashboards that we produced 
to help when we work with our customers, for them to understand the activity that we're working through, the challenges that we've got, and how we're going about putting those challenges to bed and improving upon them. So this is work that we're doing right now to ensure that for our NHS, we're delivering the best possible service that we can. And in all that, within all the challenges of supply, there is still a challenge for the NHS to deliver value. Because as we know, not only is there a challenge on supply, there's also a squeeze on budgets as well. So NHS supply chain is also committed to ensuring that it delivers value to the NHS. And we've delivered significant value in terms of savings over the years and we'll continue to work together to deliver those. But we also need to do that differently so that it's no longer about price. Price is one factor of many when we come to look at our supply chain strategies and our category strategies. We need to take account of front and centre resilience. We need to take account of uh, uh, value and how we deliver value and also things such as sustainability. And there are significant pieces of work that are going on within the NHS supply chain operation to ensure that we can deliver all of those kind of things into the NHS. So this is just an example of some of the things that we work with and some of the actual decision points that we make when we're putting our category strategies together and working into the NHS. I spoke a little bit about sustainability and NHS supply chain being the size of organisation that it is has a significant role to play in supporting the NHS with its net zero ambitions. So we work as an organisation very closely with our NHS England partners around the delivery of that net zero roadmap. Uh, and you mean the, the most significant that we've got our eyes set on at the moment is April 2023 when organisations will need to start to report and have carbon plans in place. And we're working towards that and again that will feature as part of our supply chain strategy and how we make certain decisions about products that we buy and suppliers that we actually work with. So it's a, it's a growing and increasing uh, influence on the way in which we do business. Very, very challenging targets with, which I know that you're all faced with and the intent of NHS supply chain is, is that we can actually help you deliver your sustainability targets by us actually doing elements of the activity for you by making our supply chain as sustainable and as efficient as possible. We're also working, and I spoke about value and moving away from a, pro, uh, a focus just on price. So value-based procurement, value-based healthcare, I'm sure they're both terms that you've heard quite a lot of over the last couple of years. NHS supply chain, uh, we like to think we're, we're leading the way on that within the NHS. We are working with multiple different suppliers and, and different customers to firstly to pilot activity, but also ensure that we've got the capability and capacity to uh, put contracts and arrangements in place that deliver value for the NHS, looking at patient pathways and whole system costs. I think what I might ask today is if you take something away from this uh, presentation in relation to value-based procurement, is we need our NHS to consider those value measures. Because one of the challenges that we get is in terms of implementation is the NHS understanding and recognising value that can be delivered by looking across a patient pathway rather than just looking at price. So that's a really important one for us. And before I hand over to Simon, I just wanted to kind of put this slide up in terms of our commitment. We are committed to ensuring that the NHS can put patients first. That is, as I said right at the very start, NHS supply chain exists only to ensure that the NHS can deliver for its patients. So that's it from me from now. I'm going to hand over to Simon, who's going to talk to you about working with NHS supply chain, and I'll speak to you again in a little while. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon all, uh, my name's Simon Cork and firstly I want to thank Heather and Chris for inviting me to be able to speak with them today and really show the voice of the customer and I think that just shows the relationship and how it's been developed between NHS providers and NHS supply chain so thank you both. My name's Simon Clark um, and I'm unique when it comes to procurement within the NHS is I'm responsible for one of the first shared procurement services for the integrated care system. 
So I'm responsible for University Hospitals Birmingham, responsible for Royal Orthopaedics, for Birmingham Women's and Children's and Birmingham Communities Healthcare. Uh, we're currently in consultation of moving over the, the Birmingham Mental Health Trust as well. And what this means is we will be a single procurement entity looking for the needs of that um, integrated system and more importantly leveraging not only that professional capacity but also spend and continue with the challenges that we all face through supply chain and also as an NHS provider. Working with NHS supply chain, I, I personally have worked with NHS supply chain for 12 years um, and has it been challenging? Yes, it's been extremely challenging but extremely challenging for all of us. You know, what we need to start doing, especially as we move into our integrated care systems, is understand that we have to mature better. We've got to do this collectively. If we don't do it collectively, we are going to fail. And the support that most NHS organisations, especially the provider organisations, have a high dependency on supply chain to make sure those products, those consumables arrive daily to the right place, right time and the right product to ensure that patient quality care. Over the years we've been confrontational and I think over recent years we've been able to develop and become more collaboratively and one of, that, one of those areas is where we have become more collaborative is within the Resilience Working Group. So now across that Resilience Working Group which formed in November 2021 and what we've come together is actually working together on the issues that really impact us all. You know, we can't get away that just because supply chain doesn't deliver something that is dependent on the national and international challenges we're all facing today. We only have to go to our supermarkets and realise what's going on and who'd have known that every raw material that goes into every NHS product came from Ukraine because I think that's what we're all learning at the present moment but it has been a lesson learned for all of us. The membership at the present moment, and it is growing all the time, covers all the regions across NHS England and supported by very strong and influential procurement colleagues from that provider collaborative that we all work together. Um, and a lot of these are also come from different areas like the Shelford Group, HCSA members as well, and it really is a strong group and, and credit to supply chain and moving that forward. Now, what has this resilience group been able to do? Well, we've been able to influence and what matters to the customer. And I've got to say, credit to supply chain have stepped up and responded to that quite admirably. And one of those areas is with the actual delivery to date. So we've got now early warning of stock outs and, and supply uh, markets. We've got a clear sort of visibility of those demand management issues because we do have to deal, NHS providers every single day have to deal with stock outs where we have to find alternatives or demand management where the product has been managed for and on behalf of us and we know how frustrating that is but we need to ensure that we're working with supply chain, that we're giving correct volumes rather than trying to stock up our warehouse and nobody else. So we, we benefit the system and we benefit the country nationally. Um, and then, of course, reporting. That, and you've already seen from uh, Chrissy's earlier slide the dashboard that we now get and that early warning, that visibility. Now, we've still got a lot to progress, um, but what we can see is the progress we've made today has been excellent. And as a customer and a voice of a customer, we're being heard. Um, and I think that's really encouraging. And the one thing I do have to say is that actually it, we have to do this collectively. We've got to do it together and, and we're stronger together by doing so. So that was my little bit. And Chris, if you want to summarise now, thank you. Thank you to Simon and also thank you to Heather as well. And as Simon says, the, the challenges that we face in the NHS are collective challenges. And working with the likes of Simon and other NHS organisations has really helped us understand acutely the challenges that you have within the NHS and helps us shape our operations as we move forward and the strategies that we take and the decisions that we take. So in summary, NHS supply chain, excuse me, NHS supply chain, we're here to serve the NHS. Our mission is to make sure that the NHS, it make, we make it easier for the NHS to put patients first. So I'm going to move to see now if there are any questions. Do I need to put these on?
No questions? <laughs> Hi, uh, thank you for that. Um, I come from a clinical background, so that was very, very useful for me. That's it, there's no questions. Um, you can hear me, yeah? Okay. Yeah, thanks. So my question is, how do you decide what to procure in the first place? And where's the clinical input at that level? So in terms of the uh, supply range, the energy supply chain, we, we have a defined, um, I suppose, uh, product range. It, within those product categories, uh, the, the teams who are doing the procurement work on a category management strategy approach. So they will look at, if they were going to buy examination gloves, let's, let's, let's use a very simple example, uh, they would be uh, professionals in understanding those markets and exactly how you would need to do that. All of the category strategies that we develop have input in from the NHS. So we operate uh, uh, on, on a basis whereby we reach out and have specialists that come from the NHS who work with clinical teams that we've also got with our organisation to help inform what the outcome of that category strategy needs to deliver. So it is, um, it is one of those challenges that we have because, we, 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 to be honest, we can never get enough input and we do appreciate that people in the NHS are very, very busy. Uh, but it is an area that's really, really important to us because what we strive to ensure is, is the outcome of any procurement activity delivers what the NHS requires of it. So clinical input is certainly a part of it. We'd like some more. Any more questions? Sorry, I was just, just wanted, to, just on the clinical piece, um, I'm establishing a clinical advisory group that will feed into the customer advisory group at national level with clinical engagement, particularly to look at things like patient safety, product standardisation and so on. We're also strengthening our relationship with GERF and kind of patient pathway piece because actually I think there's great opportunities in terms of bringing clinical innovation in. So, so there's the kind of eventually when we buy it, but actually there's a lot more of clinical influence that we need to strengthen in the whole process. And I, I just wanted to add to what Heather said, a lot of NHS providers now, and we don't have basic procurement teams, I have a clinical procurement specialist team now who have a heavy involvement and will also be supporting collaboratively with supply chain to making those decisions and there's been a great network of working with supply chain and the clinical procurement specialists and I think it's really encouraging. So clinical but also in a board level role um, and um, I've worked with the supply chain for absolute years in, in a clinical role as a nurse but um, a bit of naivety about what you do and do cover and I have posted a question on the glissa but I'll just ask it anyway. I don't know if I thought you caught cover energy costs, that's a significant risk currently uh, faced by most organisations actually across the NHS and it looks as though organisations are taking independent advice about whether or not to hedge or stick in terms of energy costs. So first question is, do you cover it as a supply chain? Um, and two, in terms of those regional um, groups linking in, is there likely to be a level of advice? Because it's a dicey world out there, isn't it? And uh, recent advice we got was to hedge we didn't hedge, and actually we had hedged, we'd lost a million pounds in the space of five days. So just, just grateful for a level of advice about how to manage that. Energy supply chain, unfortunately, doesn't actually procure uh, energy or, or utilities, I'm afraid. So uh, it may well be that we can find out for you. We'll take our, our, if you let us have your details, we'll see if we can find out who does. Simon? Hi. Sorry, Chris. Uh, hi, what we've done is, is now there's been a, a new group in NHS England formed with is the central commercial function. And part of that function and the, the 43 ICS procurement leads went to a forum not long ago and actually had the same challenging question. And given that the Crown Commercial Service uh, literally organises 60% of public sector spend, we've pushed it back to them and said, why is that not being done for the NHS? So, you know, I've got an ICS system where I have four energy buyers who don't do it the same way. 
you know, and I have four different ranges. So what we have done is pushed it back to the central commercial function to say this should be done centrally and currently that's going through for review and hopefully a decision we made within the new year, especially going into the new financial year. Thank you. Any final questions? No, nothing did come through on the piece of No? Okay, so just to say thank you again to Simon and thank you to Heather and uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you.